discussion that the ad hoc committee held last month. Staff put together some, uh, we uh, compiled some, uh, a summary That's of that discussion um, to start the discussion today. So we'll just if you'd minutes. like, I can read each of these and then we can, the commission can discuss each one at a time, if that would be the easiest. There is a compilation of, a little bit more detailed compilation of what other cities do. So again, based on the conversation from last month and then what uh, uh, some of the, um, the way that the other cities handle the demo reviews, I put together some ideas for discussion. So the criteria would be any building structure or object that has been determined eligible for designation or currently designated on the state or national register of historic places. And this can be easily, uh, this data can easily be pulled from our, um, our GIS because all of the surveys that the Historic Preservation Commission has supported either through um, uh, recommend recommendations for grant projects uh, funded through the State Historic Preservation Office or the Neva uh, National Park Service um, all of that survey data gets entered into GIS and is shown whether or not the buildings have been determined eligible or have been listed on the national or state registers of historic mm -hmm. places. So that would be an easy place to start um, as a trigger uh, because these buildings have already been determined significant and would not require any additional uh, research. The trigger would be an application for a permit to demolish an eligible or designated building structure or object. The fees would and this has not been obviously vetted through um, uh, building and safety um, and other relevant departments, but th it could be a total of $450, which would include the current $300 uh, demolition permit fee and $150 for online newspaper and newspaper notification and a sign would be posted on the property. The review period would be 15 days to begin when the application is submitted to the Department of Planning for demolition and additional outcomes might, could possibly be that the commission could use the 15 days to work with the property owner on alternatives to demolition, and the commission may recommend at the commission's expense that a plaque be placed on the property recognizing the significance of the demolished building. So now this, this would actually count for any building, even though it's gonna affect the house and 
Correct. Any building that has been determined eligible for designation or is currently designated on the state management register. All right. I'm a little confused. So the demolition permit from the building department is a little over $300? Mm-hmm. Okay. I would think it would be more than that if there was supervision or demolition and dust control and all that. I would have thought it would be in the higher management district. Well, there may be additional permits like through the county for the larger projects that are for dust control and other things like that. But this is with the city of Las Vegas. It's a $300 permit. Is $106 actually enough for that number came from? That came from our, the person in our office is responsible for ordering the signs and doing the newspaper notifications for other zoning entitlement projects. So that's inadequate? Yes. And my big question, I think, is that we're only talking about a 15-day review period. And when we're talking, like the city of Phoenix is a 90-day, I think. The Lake Erie is typically 90 days. It was mentioned in this. That's the first time I think that the Lake Erie is typically 90 days and the four alternatives. So the 15 days the number came from, what else did we get away with? Did we pull that out of the hat? Well, this is, again, this is a starting point for the discussion today. But, yes, that is what we think is feasible. Is that calendar days? Could we decide? I think it is calendar days. We should add that. How much of that 15 days could we use getting the fact that a permit got applied for at Rancho to your desk to say, I mean, is there, does that take five days through the machinery to get to your desk? Or is that, you know, you get an alert on your tech phone and then they tell you, hey. No, typically if I'm in the office, I will get a phone call from the planner who has accepted the application. And they say, and this is for city designated historic properties. They'll say, you know, so-and-so is down here and they want to, you know, replace their roof or something. And then I can respond to that immediately. If I'm not in the office, it's an email that I can respond to when I get back. But it's immediate. Yes. So it doesn't go through five days of that before the permit. No. Okay. So we're not sitting on five days. No. Is it only in immediate for city? Yes. If it looks like I'm going to be out of town for a few days, then there are other people in the office who have the authority to make that determination. But typically they make a pretty good effort to reach out to me before that happens. So are we relying on you as staff to deal with this? I mean, is this the start of the conversation with them? Are we calling an emergency meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission? Are we calling, which are not going to look like they're going to be open meeting laws and all that. I mean, how is that? Are we alerted as commissioners or as the working body as opposed to is this a staff thing? Well, in that we could possibly do an email notice to the commission. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Court, may I? Yes, please. What I was, okay, so globally the HPC is going to offer whatever types of amendments it would like to the city council, right? But the question is, from a practical standpoint, you get an email notification. What happens next? Right? We need to understand what happens next. Right? And that's the question you're asking. Right. What happens next? Do we, is there an immediate stop to the demolition permit process? I mean, right now how it works is demolition of local, locally listed properties have to go through the HPC process. What I think I'm hearing 
in a roundabout way is w we would be maybe I am maybe I'm right maybe I'm wrong are we we're kind of just expanding that Courtney mm -hmm. right and then kind of tweaking the rules we currently have right so we would we would what we would do is it would say instead of just things on the local register need to go through these processes right HPC review Things on the state register and national register, state or state and national. That's what national. I thought yeah. I heard. Would and would eligible. also go and, and, and eligible and eligible would start here right. instead of start on the first floor of the DA. Well, I guess it all does, but it would start with an HPO as opposed to a planner one on the first floor of the DSC, right? right? Or the building permit guy. It'll still on. start with th that the planner <coughs> on the first floor. Because okay. they will be accepting the application, and then they would let me know. Okay. And there may be some cases where I can, e there are cases where we've done surveys, and the building has been demolished or, or something, you know, or most of the building has been demolished or significantly altered since the survey was completed, right? And so, um, you know, it might be an easy one that I can just say, you know, sure, that's, it's been so altered or, you know, there's only the facade standing up anymore or something like that. And then I can report to the commission. So what we would need to discuss are the ones that are probably still maintain their eligibility and what that's, those steps would be. And then I would just add that um, our office, the attorney's office, will, will also kind of vet through some of the ideas just to make sure that we don't inadvertently uh, cost the city money. Strict. Uh, <coughs> it's hard to explain it simply. If 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 we if we if if, if we restrict by regulation the ability of a, a property owner to do something with their property, then we may we may have to address that difference in value uh, with the property owner. So um, I think there are things that other I think. The things that Courtney has, has brought forward have been vetted in other jurisdictions, and they're comfortable with what's going on. Um, but that's just something that we'll do as well once you come to a conclusion as to what you want to recommend to the city council for. And so does the law just say run it with the building department for a year? Is that the way that works? I have not brought anything to them yet. I'm just, other than just some real informal discussion, I was waiting to see what the commission discussed today. It, it wouldn't make sense, at least from my perspective, to spend so much time kind of uh, vetting five different proposals if really there were two that this body wanted to, to review. And I guess likewise, though, if the building department does a review with one of those two that we may like, they're going to uh, revert. That's that's pretty unlikely. Um, m my, I, I think the way it would work is if the commission comes up with what they would like to propose to council, um, we would really vet it through the um, uh, building department just to see is there is there any critical error, fatal flaw in this scheme that you see in terms of how we do things? Uh, do we need to revise it anyway? As a policy, they're not going to care. They'll, you know, so typically, I mean, what they'll say is, yeah, no, this would not cause any heartburn on our side. If it did, it might may be a change in fee to recover their cost or whatever, mm -hmm. since they're sort of an enterprise fund. Right. Um, but beyond that, if can't, they'll, they'll, what they'll say, what Chris Knight will like to say is that if council adopts this policy, it doesn't have any impact on our operations or our costs, we'll just implement it. So, right. but yeah, we would vet it just to make sure there's not some fatal flaw in, in what we, what you come up with and um, and to make sure it wouldn't add any expense to, to their operation because they need to recapture all that. Mm -hmm. All right, so mostly the, the what next is, is really a, a staff thing, a staff kind of thing, but um, unless, I mean, there may be a serious. Well, just, no, no, the, the, the what next would be, it sounds like, the process we use now for local designation and that what next is it goes to HPO and then gets on a historic planning commission agenda 
But that's not what this is. This is a little bit different. This is a, essentially creating a, uh, um, a disruption in the normal process that allows, that creates an opportunity for information to be shared, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if there's opportunity, because where right. I see the, the challenge, right, is, um, is Courtney sends an email to the planning commissioners. Got this demolition request, it's for an eligible building, it still meets all those same criteria. Um, um, then what, right? So she gets an email back saying, oh, I'd like to meet with the property owner, I'd like to have an opportunity to talk about this, or I think this is something that's important that if demolished, we need a plaque there. Mm -hmm. But there's no opportunity for them to deliberate until the next right. HPC. So. Right. So at, at least so there would be a sharing of information and then planning uh, um, HP uh, commissioners could do what they, you know, take whatever action they think is, you know, appropriate. Okay, so not, okay, so I, I kind of mis misunderstood. I was thinking we had a what next. The what next is, is people get, people have an opportunity to understand what's happening. And right. the what next is uh, whatever individual Commission members uh, might do. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Like some commission, some uh, commission members might think, oh, I, that's you know, that's not something that I see as all that big of a deal or whatever. And others might say, hey, I know something about that. I'd like to contact the property owner, see if I can get in there, and maybe see if there's anything we should recover or take pictures or whatever. Mm -hmm. Courtney will do her due diligence. We'll post it to see if anybody. You know, says, hey, wait a minute, something happened there that's important you need to know about, that kind yeah. of stuff. And then we'll be able to document that. And it's certainly better than no notice at all. Right. Having and that, that's that's demolished and we will And I think Courtney crafted this based on the last conversation where what we really need is to be able to uh, share that information and get a notice so that so that things won't just happen and, and we miss opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. I I think there needs to be a built in notification to the commission. Mm -hmm. Okay, a permit has been filed. All right, it's this building and we have a 15 day window uh, for us to talk to the building owner, to make arrangements, to salvage the, the chandeliers or, um, right. or whatever. Okay. Is that, um, do you know if, if permit information is available online? Can the general public go in and do a search on our system somewhere to say, you know what I mean? Or would we actually have to forward that information? I, I mean, it's all, it's all public when somebody applies know. for a permit. It's public information. That's right. But um, the question is, I don't know if, if once you got yeah, the permit I number. Go in, I don't want to go searching right. permits every day. That's exactly right. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. we can send you a link. Once she send, can she, well, I guess my question, can you just send a link or a number yes. that you can just go to the link, put the number in, and you get all the information, right? Right. The, the site and the who the applicant is and all that, so at least you know who to call. Okay. So, I guess staff's concern, or the next, or, or the next question that we need to consider is, if it's something that the commission feels strongly should not be demolished, then it would go on an HPC agenda. Would that then extend the 15 days? Well, that's where you're going to get into a bit of a sticky wicket, isn't right. it? Right. Unless we're going to create the power for us to actually really hold something up. I mean, a 15-day review process is one thing, but you know, 60, 90 days, uh, the ability to actually stop them from tearing that down is just, you know. I mean, it's, it's if you can't do that, you know, then why the extra time? I guess is what well, the extra 15 days. No, the extra. If we if we're going to go if. If we take it to an HPC meeting, we could be adding on another 45 days or whatever, right. 60 days. Yeah. And if there's With nothing that the, the commission can really do, that, right? Right. Yeah. then why add all that extra time? Well, that's right. I mean, the There needs to be sufficient time so that they can review it, think about it, see if there's opportunity to take whatever action they feel is necessary. But they're doing it as individual commissioners, not as commission, so it's a little bit weird. Well, it's, I mean, I understand that from a legal basis, they're still doing it as commissioners. I mean. From the, yeah, from but they the can't do it together. They can't say, hey, meet right. me at the site <laughs> and let's talk about it. Let's only two. From the property owner's <coughs> standpoint, it'll be a, a, a person that th they're getting a call from an appointed person from the city to 
they're talking about not doing what they want to do with their life, right? I mean, that's just the, the practicality of it. Well, well not necessarily, because uh, the conversation I've heard, even with the full commission, is more just want to see if there is something that's happened there or that exists there that we would like to have an opportunity yeah. to see if we can get a hold of or whatever, right? Or document. Right. I, I haven't really heard a, a strong desire to stop demolition unless it's something that's you know really, really. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying when they get a call, when somebody, when a property owner gets a call from somebody and they say, uh, "This is Jack Levine." Now, if this is Jack Levine. They might know him as Jack Levine, the guy that does downtown real estate, right? But if he calls and says Jack Levine, historic preservation commissioner for the city of Las Vegas. All I'm saying is practically, mm -hmm. when they when property owners get a call, they're gonna they're gonna hear the government calling. That's all. Mm -hmm. I just I just I just that's just it's just on the table for for thought. And once they get the call, that spur <laughs> that, that may spur them into action as well as whatever it is you all talk about that you know that the lot of this. Well, if something like this was approved, part of that process when they go to pull the permit would be some sort of an information sheet that here here is the process from this point forward given that you are eligible or listed here are the the commissioners and their mm -hmm. contact information if you either a like to call one or if you receive a call you'll know that it's legitimate or whatever and kind of you know some information right so it's yeah, not yeah. just It's just a notification to you. It's not really an extra step. It's only an extra step if Mr. Well, Surface calls them and says, I'm with the city, and I want to know what you're doing because I like that building. And I think that it's perfectly acceptable for you to do that because that's, you know, that's what you're, you're here. here. That's why you're yeah. here. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying yeah. that's, that's what might yeah. happen. Then what, you know, that, that's why I keep going back. Then what happens? Well, then... Then I guess they call their councilman and say, I thought we were good with this project. <laughs> and, right? It, it, I, I guess for me, going to and having a developer sit there and listen to six different people calling, <laughs> commissioners, well, say this is Jack Levine. Mm -hmm. Number one, as it over to, hey, Bob, call and tell the developer, Bob Sadick will be calling you on this or quote me or, you know, one point. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's a great right. idea. They're, they're because <coughs> they're nuts. Right. she could coordinate it, send yeah. it out, say, if you have any comments, you have three days send to get it, it back to me. To me. Mm -hmm. And then she could call the person and say there are no comments or we've got a couple comments. Would you be okay setting them up meeting on site with this commissioner? And that's kind of how I that's envisioned a, that's it. That's a great so yes, idea. Yeah. It, it's a good idea. Now here's I, I just on a practical basis. I know she's. What happens when Bob? Well, well, it's okay. She calls on behalf. You know, she calls. She's HBO. She calls. Says we got three complaints or we got three issues. Uh, we want to set up a meeting pursuant to code because we're going to write that in the code, right? Uh, here's the, here's the real rub. Let's say you guys are really upset about the fact that this building's coming down. What are you going to do about it? Right, that's. I think that's the. I think that's the issue, because once you go that far, sitting with the developer, and the developer looks over across and says, "What are you going to do about it?" Yeah, what do you do? Right. I, there's either. I, I would hate for there to be unjustified expectations, right, Tom? I mean, no, the justific expectations that maybe 
needs something to be done, and the developer just says, well, you know what, pound sand. And then suddenly it's done. Right, yeah, and that's okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, yeah. I, I well, You know, what Patrick just said, though, is that is, is, is our trigger point at the right spot. You know, I've been thinking all along is that the guy just shows up and says, I want to tear down a house in, you know, I, I want to, this is old beat up house I bought it from the bank. Mm -hmm. It's in the uh, Ridge District. It's in, okay, it's eligible. It's whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. That that's the trigger point is the first awareness that anybody has of this fact, okay? But that may not be the case. I mean, there may be whole development plans and whatever long before <coughs> the, the demolition permit gets pulled. There, we, I mean, it may have already gone to city council with, you know, site reviews and, and whatever, and then long down the process is, okay, now we're ready to tear that building down so we can proceed with city council already. I mean, that, there needs to be a trigger point way back before that So, uh, yeah, so, so the SDRs. Yeah, so pre app yeah. for a historic, something that's going to happen to a historic property, she's aware of it. And that's the first that's the first time anything comes up to us. Yeah. And that's well in advance of anything going to planning commission or city council. It's certainly well in advance of the right. demolition permit. So I think maybe. Not always. Need not always. We <coughs> well, that's true. There's there, there could be a variety right. of trigger points depending on the circumstances. Yeah. But this, the, so the demolition process, you know, when I'm dealing and working for a developer, that's like one of the first things they get you doing, even before they go to planning commission mm -hmm. uh, for zoning and stuff like that. When they're fast tracking it, they got stuff to tear yeah, that sucker down. Yeah, because it's a liability and, it, and really, in most jurisdictions, you can <coughs> get that in the, in the same day, you know, that, that type of thing. They typically I mean, the only, the only delay is the shutoffs with the utilities, that takes some time. But, um, hey, can, can I ask an, another question since we're getting all this out? What I heard you say was um, local, state, national, and there's eligible to that number three, right? Right, uh, well, local's local already, already in the so code. just state and national, this would expand into state well, and national. So and eligible. So what and I mean eligible. by eligible is so eligible. oftentimes with eligible properties, we have some outside expert kind of do the work to figure out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we just don't have someone on staff who has time to do it, right? Right. right. And then we, I, what I see, the commission comes and we kind of discuss it and argue about it, is it eligible, is it not? Are we gonna define or should we define for the, the code an easy way to determine what's eligible, right? Because, like you said last time, Courtney, so we just have to define. There are going to be, there are going to be houses, st st or maybe it's Tom. One of you said there's going to be stucco homes and tracks coming up soon that will be fifty years old. Fifty years old, which so, which gives them one piece of the four pieces of eligibility. Well, so, I, I right? would just say we would just use the criteria that was used to establish eligibility. So it's easy. Um, whatever that criteria, either the state or national register criteria, we can say that this this structure has been found to meet that criteria. We're talking about stuff that's already right. It's determined already been it. determined. Oh, when I when I say eligible, I thought you meant the those that are do eligible the and no. also no. those that are on the list. It is oh. eligible, but they have been determined eligible so based on criteria, and that just means that the nomination has not gone forward. Well, that's the, that's the point. Then. Yeah, I think so. There, it's not just those on the list, Tom. It's not just those on the list. It's no. not just fifty-year-old buildings. It's right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's districts. It's, it's individual houses. And, and all the other ones, Courtney would review as she does permits. Correct. Yeah. It's just that those that raise to a higher level, based on some criteria that we, that the starting point is either determined eligible on the state or national register, right. get a higher, get an, another higher level of review before something happens. Thank you. I just see that there could be an argument. Yeah, if it's been determined, it's because we've hired a consultant that meets the professional qualifications for the National okay, Register, so it's not uh, as established by them. Yeah. It's not any of it that can be argued to be eligible, it's that which has already right. been determined to be eligible. Correct. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. 
since I'll be writing the ordinance, I'll try to, I'm trying to understand it. Well, well, there is a definition for all of all right. the means that's been vetted already right. in, in that regard. Um, okay, so then during the 15 calendar days, staff would coordinate any communication between the commission and the property owner. Right. Okay. And that makes sense. And that's kind of how I envision that happening. So. Right. And and, and the, the commission would be, be given a couple days of, to for us to comment to you. Correct. Right. You get 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, something like three days seems reasonable, right? You better be in town. Well, uh, but among the I entire know. commission, enough people all probably get the right. message out three days to be able to just notify coordinators if there's something that we want to we want to talk about. So we need to okay. Good. And then it's not in practicality so so and so is coming in to do a demo permit can't get it over the counter that day now. is that they're they're paying for the equipment and the right. people to be on the site while they go pull the permit. And so yeah. 15 days is a significant cost. Yeah. I was interested in the answer you got was that that the owner is by contract with the council. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And, and, and once, I, I, if something is adopted by council and gets out there, people will know about it. And right. if they don't, yeah, then we'll that's on them. I agree with you completely. It's the code, you should know. That's your opinion. So it is what it is. I, I, I worry a little bit about the notification. I don't worry about it, but I, I, I think it's worth talking about for a second. Uh, the notification, I don't think it means anything. So I wonder if just notifying HPC is good enough and not going to the extra expense of putting something in the newspaper that nobody's gonna see, or on our website that nobody's gonna see. Unless there's another way to do a notification that makes sense that actually might get to people who care. I don't know if that does anything. Somebody lived here. I remember there was this thing mm -hmm. about the Pop Squire's house, and it was mm -hmm. going to have to go on top of a building, and they couldn't figure out what to do with it. And it took up two or three abeyances, and it was just, what's mm -hmm. nice about this notification is that it kind of puts everybody in the city as well on those. Level playing field. You know, yeah, it it does. They, 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 you know, so everyone mm -hmm. understands. So 
when things go to planning commission, when things go to city council, there might be some uh, advanced warning and maybe some consideration of the scope of issue of when you say, was that done or Which still leaves me with the, the, the trigger point of that it's possible mm -hmm. that it is gonna, could have gone through zoning site review, all that, and before it, before a demolition permit gets pulled. I, I, and I think we're adding that as we're well, okay. right? Yep. Okay, we yep. agree. Okay. Yep. Anything, anything that meets these criteria in a pre-app gets okay. the same treatment. Okay. Well, we have to think about that a little bit because we have statutory deadlines, but this should we should be able to accommodate 15 days easily. Yep. In fact, it's not even a timing issue. It's mostly would be sort of a track issue. We try to get our pre-ops done, but sometimes they come in at the last minute and being customer service oriented, we try to accommodate that as much as it drives our planners crazy. <laughs> but we do our best, but sometimes it could come in closing day and then what would that mean in terms of the timeline? Okay. Uh, this 15 days, would we have to modify this? Regarding the notification, so we are saying no to the online and newspaper and the sign posted just, on the just property? Just asking the question. I, I don't know. That maybe, maybe a sign on the, well, I don't know. I mean, if, if we're not putting it out to the public, you know, and we're not looking for public input on mm -hmm. this, and we're not wanting to freak the developers out or, um, hey, you know, we're notifying the, the neighborhood. Project is going through that public hearing. Mm -hmm. In violation of the planning code. Well, I mean, it, it, once you start, if you were, like, for example, to do the same level of notification you do for a zone change or something, right. you're really creating a lot of headaches for somebody, people that may not have otherwise been concerned. But on the other hand, maybe they, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, the, 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 the commission, the Historic Preservation Commission is sort of um, given the responsibility to look out for these interests on behalf of the council, right? And so that's the first line of defense or evaluation. Um, do we, and there are folk in the community who the plan, uh, HPC commissioners are tapped into to vet things and talk about stuff. Do you want to have general public discourse and debate is on these what things? What is a I mean, building that's going to generate a public outcry over? That's, I, uh, yeah, I know. Like there's what, what nothing we, like that's the problem. Old Las Vegas there's nothing school, you can, right? That, that's on La Hopper right now, right? That and no, you're that's you're that's creating a, you're creating, as far as I'm concerned, you're creating, you're creating strong work. There may be an outcry on a particular building. Right. And they may inundate people. Hey, you're HPC members, let's get this thing stopped. And the answer is Well nothing we do. Right? Well, Las I mean, Vegas High School, the Las Vegas Academy is a really great school. example of the school district suddenly I mean on there just last night and right. I heard in the paper. I heard this a week ago. Yeah. 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 I mean, and we got to admit, all of this, or the, that, okay. that made yeah. us stand up in our chairs when we read it. Right. right. So okay, so then, let's pretend that we demo, do something. Yeah. Let's yeah. pretend yeah. that yeah. demo yeah. permit came through. This is a good exercise. I'm yeah, right the, I mean, it's a practical one. Demo yeah. permit comes in yeah. from the school district. Oh, well, it's actually they a bad, it it's a bad through, review yeah. because it doesn't come through us. Doesn't but uh, let's pretend it did. Why wouldn't it come through us? Because it's a, it's a state, it's a state yeah. agency. Yeah. But let's let's pretend for a moment it does because it's still kind of a good uh, example. A good uh, example. So, I mean, you can pick any building you think is historically significant, but this is an easy one. Uh, private owner comes in with a historically significant uh, demolition permit. They we run through this process, right? They get the permit, but they're um, th 
they meet all the they meet our standards, right, of review, so they get a permit, but they're not allowed to exercise within 15 days, right? So legally, they now have the legal right to act in 15 days, no matter what. So, uh, calls are, we, we, we make some calls, you make some calls. Council member whose ward school district or uh, building is in is now calling me and you, city manager, what are we gonna do to stop this? And the answer is nothing. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that that, that is the natural, con you, were at, you asked a question when we started, what's next? That's a natural consequence, potentially, of, of this. Well, and that's not a bad thing. I don't know that that is a great example because that's something that public outcry can change, mm -hmm. you know, direction. Somebody wanting to tear down a house that's eligible but not listed and build something that's in the spirit of the district and everything. Do you want the entire neighborhood coming out and up and on? I don't know, maybe, maybe I not. Know. I mean, and how do you notify them? Those costs could be huge. All I'm pointing out, though, is is putting something in the newspaper and on the website doesn't do anything. Does the city go by to be more specific in their notification, or can they go to even a specific group of organizations with notification, or does it have to be broad in the general public notification? We do that all the time. We will send something to the uh, head of an HOA, to the head of some organization that's interested. You know, like, I think that there might be something like that. I don't know if, um, well, even if it's an email or, or talk to some other. The, the social media distribution of they're going to tear down Las Vegas High School mm -hmm. would be instantaneously massive. Right. Viral distribution of, you know, making sure they're signing and showing up tomorrow. Well, certainly commissioners are free to contact the media, correct? If it's something they feel strongly about. Yeah, if they look at our, our like city manager and the show policy and mm -hmm. it's like, hey, is this just do you want to be asked to consider this? And then that's the end. I mean, personally, sure, anybody, any concerned citizen can do whatever they want to do. If their if their person calls, says I'm historic preservation commissioner of the city of Las Vegas and here's what I have to right. say, I, I don't know They can't, they just don't want to. But then earlier we were talking about having all these, you know, having the, um, the commissioner all calling a developer. Yeah. Well, now yeah. imagine the entire community calling this person. Yeah. So I don't, and I don't know how you would control that once you put it out. Maybe you don't want to. Again, I don't know. I just. But I think. This, this is a succeed in allowing, giving us the opportunity to put it out. I mean, that, that at least we know about it, that we can put it out. I mean, you know, if I put it on my Facebook page, I'm not sure I would have gone. You know, well, and that's it. sort of the point. Um, all the commissioners who get it and see something about it that they want to let people know, they have avenues to do that. So. Right. We could just stick with this one. It, it, one of the things it does do is give um, the commission and the city, I guess, a little cover to say, well, we, we did notice it. Uh, you can't send a notice to every single person in the city, but I don't know if that's worth doing it for that reason. I don't, I don't know. Maybe just leave it as it is. Yeah, you mean with the sign in the newspaper ad in the, or in the, in the, in the newspaper ad? Maybe it's resolved with council the way you want it resolved, and maybe it's not. But it certainly, it certainly bring shines a light on the exactly. issue, right? Yeah. And then there's going to be conversation about it. Right. Tom's going to be asked. <laughs> Tom and and, and Corey will be asked to, to opine. Uh, you know, the city the city gears will turn. No matter what comes out of this commission and goes to the city council, the gears will start to turn. And I think that's a that's a net positive and not a net negative. I yeah, and <coughs> pick it out of the high school. I think we'd all look pretty bad with the current system if it's mm -hmm. torn down. Like
Sunday morning. So we have about five minutes to wrap up this meeting. Are the board clerk can go. Really, we, we, we shouldn't waste some good calendar stuff. I, I think if we, uh, if, if we took the five minutes and we just started from in the beginning and walked our way through it again, that, that we have it right yeah. to be able to report to the full commission and that and staff and that. Well, this, yeah, and then this will go before the commission in I mean, we would be reporting today, but then an action item to the commission in April. Okay. So, so we're going to start with a trigger point of a demolition permit. Uh, well, uh, a of establishing that this applies to um, two different categories. One is that are proper. We're expanding it to include state and and national. If it already is a designation. Yes, or yes, determined yes. eligible. Okay. And on the second group, if it's already been determined as eligible, but, but the designation hasn't been achieved yet, either because nobody started the, the process or the process is ongoing. Um, so we have two different categories of, you know, already a designated or eligible. And any kind of a pre application or demolition permit affecting those properties would then, planning department would then kick off building department would then kick off an email to you, a notification to you, and then you're going to be able to notify the, the commission and ask for comments in a, in a three-day period because the staff is directed then to contact that developer because we've given them notice that there's a 15-day waiting period, okay, for us to be able to react. Yeah, I think we don't issue a permit, Tom. I think it's a, I think it's a, there's one, here, here's what I'm saying. There's going to be one or two instances in the next 10 years where somebody on the council is going to say, or the mayor's going to say, I don't want that property knocked down. And it's going to be a lot harder for me to stop that property from being knocked down if the permit is issued, right? Yeah. Because it's, the, done. it's done. You know, yeah. you can't, you go to court with a permit, right? It's, and you've spent money on that permit, and you've spent money on this and that, it's really hard to yank that permit back. I'm, Maybe I, I, I'm going to get real life situation, I'm not a sleep ball or anything, <laughs> but when I'm trying to jam something through yeah. for a client, I get that money in that uh, person's hands and I get a receipt. And then, quote, the cities are pregnant with me, and I have some recourse legally to Back so maybe I try to day. maybe I try to figure out how, or maybe we talk more and figure out how we can, they can come in, they can apply, but it's not. Right. You know, yeah, I don't know. So there's there's some. They can't. They that apply where it's perfect, Jim. Yeah, I mean we. Yeah, you table it for fifteen days. Now got an application, application process for a demo permit. Maybe that's what it is. The process is for fifteen days. Yeah. I don't know. It's. Anyway, sorry to, to interrupt your yeah. five no, minutes. We, we, no, no, we have 15 days to issue the permit. Yeah, yeah. we have yeah. 15 days to issue Yeah, you apply for the permit and you have yeah. 15 days to issue. Yeah, that's right. None of this just yeah. issuing when you walk right. in the door. Yeah, because then there's certainty anywhere. that when 15 days is up, it's up. Yeah. But they don't have any rights until that 15 that's days right. is exactly. expired. Yeah. That's what we need. City. Yeah, that's a good feeling. Yeah, that's issue. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt there. That's how a lot of our stuff works, right? Where the state uh, says, look, you got... 20, 20 days, and if you don't take action, then it's deemed approved, <coughs> yep. and you got to move on. Yep. One, one of the yep. things that we didn't discuss, which is like the, the signage and the placking or whatever, you know, I mean, for us to, uh, I mean, one of the things at the end of the 15 days, it, it, I mean, do we then have the power to say this is conditional upon the whatever replacement building or this property is going to get placked, and we've got, you know, and we, we may have a year or on. 
commission can recommend that they can't require that a plaque be placed on public pro or private property. So well, I don't even know when you do that. Do they, do they do that commission? When, is that on the general permit? Or do you put that on Well, that would be when I reach out to. I think what you would do is if you wanted to add those teeth in there, I guess it could be something like a condition shall be placed on any subsequent site plan as approved requiring this. But if there's not going to be a site plan, I think about one. It's a, if it's one, if it's a 5,000 square foot lot in Huntridge or 7,000 square foot lot in Huntridge, there's a demo permit and it's a permitted use, right? There, you, there, they, there's they no process. They, they just, just go, go to a building and get the permit. Yeah, it's going to get the permit. So yeah. That's no why I don't know how you would, what would be, how, where do you put yeah, the teeth in? Well, let us think yeah. about that and see if there's a way to put that in, put some teeth into it to require that went, plaque. Sorry. I guess I, I'd also like to hear from the um, attorney as to this is what we are allowed to do. So when we go meeting, uh, the media has mm -hmm. a, a commissioner and say, what about this? Okay, so um, we'll have to deal with that. I'm yeah, sure. we got to get back. Yeah. general rule, you are an appointed part-time commissioner of our Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, you don't waive your First Amendment rights because of that. Oh, really? We're on, uh, we're on the first floor. Oh, we are. Okay, I missed it. <laughs> you, don't waive, you don't waive your First Amendment well, rights on, to Marisa. speak, right? Yeah. Because I you happen to become a planet, uh, okay. the Historic Preservation I Commissioner. Back to the, 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 question, the question becomes... When, but when you accept, <coughs> when you voluntarily accept a commission on our commission, do you then agree not, not to speak on behalf of the entity in, in a certain way? And I think the answer is yes to that. And so we have to, fi we have to find out what that is. So if, if uh, Jack Levine, a citizen, mm -hmm. wants to make a statement to somebody, I suppose that's fine. <coughs> if, I am the Historic Preservation Commissioner for this award, right. and this is what I say, and this, this is what goes. I'm not sure that, that our policies, they may. I, I think in the past, the commissioners have been directed to, if they're going to contact <coughs> the media, that they identify themselves as a citizen, not as a right. representative of the commission. I'm so we can, get, yeah, we can get back to you on that. We'll get back to you, but can you speak, can you call, can you call folks and talk to them? Can you speak to me? You. You're a, yeah, you're a private you're a fine. private citizen, many times right? Re and resident of the city of Las Vegas. You can do that. I say that a, a, you know, I am a member of the commission, says, but okay, speaking personally. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. How are you? No, you just you just say I'm. We'll, we'll get back to you. You're a professor of architecture at UNLV. Yes. Yeah, but with qualifications. I'm a professor of architecture at UNLV. I'm a, I, I retired as a, a tenure professor at UNLV. Aren't you on, Aren't you also a member of the HBC? I, ha I suppose I happen to be, but I'm speaking. I'm speaking now as a private citizen. I suppose. So, right. just for clarification, we're moving forward we with, the, with yeah. the notification. As re as stated, we're moving forward with the notification. Or are we saying no newspaper, no online, only a uh, sign, or what? I can't. I, we, we were taking out the sign and online, the, no the public notification, but we are doing a notification to, to the commission. Time, uh, no, uh, to the developer at the time of the pre-application or. Okay, but no that. public notification. Yeah, we're not okay. doing public notification. Okay, well that saves the developer $150 or whatever that would be anyway. So, okay. Okay, so just to restate that uh, the criteria would be that any building that has been determined eligible or is listed on the state or national registers of historic places as, as confirmed via prior surveys by Determined uh, eligible by, by qualified professionals, okay. and I can put that in there. Okay. Um, the trigger would be an application for a permit to demolish said building or a pre-application uh, meeting for a site development plan review. Um, the fees would be $300, which is your current demolition permit fee. Uh, review period would be 15 calendar days to begin when the application is submitted or the uh, site development plan review uh, information is 
um, submitted in the schedule. Um, additional outcomes might be that the commission would use the uh, 15 calendar days to work with property owners via staff, um, and we're going to get back to the commission next month uh, with ideas about the plaque and how that might be able to be implemented, and also information about the commissioners and the media. Okay, and then I can, and then I will finesse this based on our comments today. So when we come, when it goes on the April agenda, all of these comments with the three calendar days uh, turnaround for comments from the commissioners, um, you know, how the permit is going to be held for 15 days, that sort of stuff, I will, I'll have all that on the April agenda for action. Is that good? Are we good? Comfortable with that? I, I, I okay. am too. Just bringing up one point though that Jack made, um, you know, we, we focused on our, not, our outcome being the plaque, maybe, but it, like we all discussed, we'd like to get in there and maybe there's a fireplace mantle or something like that that we, <laughs> yeah. you know, oh, that's right, right, 150 right. years old that's okay. going to the junkyard. Or, uh, See, how that, do we play that game? Too? So this is the, this <laughs> is the issue here. So the only, so there's no, so there's no expectation Remember, I, I, I do work with some council, and they're going to ask some very pointed questions yeah. when this finally gets done. No, we'll one of the you. questions is going, I guarantee you, one of the questions is going to be, what w will this allow our appointed officials to get us in trouble somehow? And one of the ways that it could happen is that somebody is really adamant I think that's another thing we've got to think about. How do we, how do we either get the city council to express that that's a, something like that is okay, or uh, we make sure in our ordinance that there are some specific parameters? Because yeah, I can I can see I can see a situation. You know, look, people get hot. Right, you're in that. You know, you see it. It's coming down. The, the, there's a belief. There's nothing that can be done. We want to say some things. Well, I'm going to do everything in my power as a historic preservation commissioner to make sure this doesn't happen. You know, that kind of thing, right? And and that. Uh, so we got That's something that's a finesse. I'm that's glad you brought it up. Yeah. I got to think about that. And yeah. I got to talk to. To Courtney and Tom yeah. about that. I mean, I didn't mean to stir the pot. We, we've all focused on the plaque that Jack mm -hmm. very aptly brought up. Like, let's take the Morelli house. You know, you're really good at like these old appliances, and there were only 200 of them made in mm -hmm. some factory in Cleveland or whatever. And you know, it'd be great to to get that. You know, um, or document, or document right. it, or something like that. And you and know, I have to you know say what I'm trying to say. Something that. That's what I was getting then, at. Then, yeah. Okay. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you phrased it perfectly. You want the piece of appliance yeah. on the owner's territory. Right? Let a man oh, want the fireplace. Just, yeah. Here's yeah. Uh -huh. It's all hand carved the, or something. The yeah. issue is you walk in as a historic preservation commissioner and say, I want that. Right? Well, maybe the guy think the, the owner thinks. I'm not going to get my project done unless I acquiesce. Those are the kinds of things we got to think. It goes back to the question, do I declare I'm an HPC commissioner or am I a, a, a citizen? Well, we can't, we can't store, salvage and store these artifacts. Certainly we can, not. And what we've done in the past, we've done this in a couple of instances where we've said, we would really like this to be saved. And then the, the developer says, okay, I will pull them and sell them. I'll make sure they get sold. And then we document that before that occurs. That's your idea. As opposed to saying, you know, mm -hmm. please don't run the loader over the fireplace yeah, mantle. You know, right. could you at least pull it off and make sure that yeah. it goes somewhere? And, yeah. that's, yeah. and that way they, they have their salvage rights. They can sell right. the artifacts um, right. or not. And I that's mean, one of the things that, that well, we that's do, a good which is an educational right. thing good. to them is yeah. to is uh, yeah. is educate them that they're right. so I, you know the, stuff these here demolition that, guys that and you gals, can make they don't know yeah. that stuff right you know? right and it could be this priceless 
mantle or I used to have a, a guy call me and say, I found a gun in the ceiling. What do you want me to do with it? It's a really old gun. You know, he Take called it me. Pawn stars. Yeah, he called me about a lot of things all the time. So he was yeah. kind of watching out. But I, you know, he, he <coughs> I think as we, as we move along and we start educating everyone that, you know, we'll get a better response. So. Good. I okay. think it's a great job. Thank you. Nice job. Guys. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, I had some fun. Conversation twice, yeah. or do you want to have it once? That's good. Right, so it's up to you. You can have because you'll have if you bring it up today. There's gonna be a lot of questions, mm -hmm. and it's not baked. You know how Courtney gets it all typed right. up and has all the <laughs> answers. All well, you do. It's you all do in my head. Job. Well, why don't we just and then you present it to us? That we've we've come up with a, with a, with a, a, a with plan. A program. Of moving pro moving parts of what what we think we can do and what we can even get away with, and we'll be bringing that back. And we'll vet it. Okay. That's a lot better. Okay. Then Courtney doesn't get nuked while she's trying to make <laughs> this thing. Well, you know? and, your, and your hard work doesn't go for naught because yeah. Yeah, all yeah, of yeah, a sudden, all, you know, yeah. there's yeah, another six ideas, ideas, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, save, we'll save the hard work but getting started. You know, there really, really does <laughs> need to be <laughs> some way, I mean, when I, Las Vegas High School is an example. I know. I, I fell off there, my chair. There really should side. be a... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. We, uh, we need to, um, I don't mean to cut you guys off, but we need to wrap this up. Okay. We're, we're not going to have another follow-up ad hoc committee meeting because this is going to get recorded, or it'll be an action item on April 9th. Beautiful. Okay. Good. Right. Well, Good. I think it was going to be You great. cool with that, Courtney? Yes, you very. With your timing and all? I okay. think it's going to be perfect. Well, great ad hoc committee. We're going we're gonna to shoot for the April meeting. If, if there's we some need to read the, the citizens' registration. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm going to close up our meeting so Ashley can turn off the computer. Mm -hmm. Wait, where's, where's the agenda again? Okay, discussions regarding future action items, uh, future agenda items by the committee, comments made during this portion of the agenda by individual members. Well, but we're, we're not going to have another meeting. So, so that, yeah, that actually that item five is moot because there will be no more meetings. Citizens participation, public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction. Uh, we, does that have to be read in every school? It does. Every yes. Time? Yes. Oh my God, yes. yes. <laughs> Here we go again. No subject may be acted upon by the board unless the subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, give your name to, for the record. The 